Or if it is the case, it's rare. But slowly, slowly over time, the promise of the world, that substance, starts to overcome us. Starts to take control. The alcohol that was the taking the edge off at the end of the day, instead of being one or two drinks, becomes three or four. Then after three or four, it becomes more and more until it takes control. And we need it. And it's a whole bottle. The drugs that were simply an extra pill for our back, for our pain, rise to be illicit substances. Things that you have to buy in a street corner. What starts out as looking at pornography, a simple flirtation in the office, blooms into something that is out of control, that requires more and more and more. And that's how addiction starts. That's how addiction begins. It doesn't start out as something that captivates our whole body right away, but slowly, slowly in time, it starts to sneak into us. And that is how the addiction of sin works as well. Slowly, slowly, the devil points these things into our lives until, until before we know it, we're out of control. A person who has an addiction is literally out of control of their lives. That substance, that alcohol, that food, that sex, that has taken control of their lives. And all that person wanted to do was to see Jesus, to see their Savior. The promises of the world are empty. The promises of the world lead to more pain, to more sickness, to more death. And what's scary is our world continues to champion these things. Our world champions these temporary fixes. What was once untalked about, an extramarital affair, kept in the shadows, well now we just say, as long as you're safe about it. And that safety has replaced abstinence. We have college parties that are high school parties, that champion kagger parties, these, where people get so drunk that some of them die. We ignore the fact that drugs can take control of someone. And we push for them to be made legal so that we can indulge in them more. Our world, our world champions these things because, because they don't know any better. They don't know where true strength comes from. They don't know where, the, where, the, where pow, the power to fix the broken relationships in our world comes from. The world doesn't know how badly they need a Savior. And the one Savior that came, that one Savior who could save us, is Christ our Lord. When He came into our world, he came and He found us helpless. He found us addicted to our sinfulness. He found us caught in the shame. Caught up in the shame of our sin. And He came and He broke those bonds. He broke those bonds, those chains that were holding us. He ripped open the prison doors of sin. The devil held us in. And He freed us. Not by... Not by power, not by might, but by His Holy Spirit. By His power alone, by His power on the cross. The power to defeat sin, death, and the devil came through His death and through His resurrection. By His death and resurrection, He paid the price once and for all for all people. He didn't come to those who are just in the gutters. He didn't come to those who are just in the church. He came to all people of all times, of all places. The poorest of the poor, He came for them. The richest of the rich, He came for them. The most sinful of all of us. He came for us. And when He came, He paid that price. The price of His life to redeem our lives. He came to rescue us because no one else could. And in His rescue, He brought to us the light. The light that pierces the darkness. 
He brought to us the light of salvation. And through Him, through Him alone, we find the strength we need. Through Him alone, we are able to see our Heavenly Father. Through Him alone, we can cry out, Lord, I want to see. And He will say, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Because through faith, Through faith in our Savior. It's not empty promises. It's not temporary fixes. But it is the one promise that will fix all of our lives. Now there's many people who don't know these promises. There's many people who this Sunday morning are sitting in churches. Who have sat in church week after week, year after year of their lives, who don't know that there is that true salvation in Christ. There's people who won't come to church, who, doesn't, who don't even know where their church is, who need to hear. They need to know that there is a true hope out there. That there is a hope beyond what this world gives. That there is sight for the blind. That God can open the eyes of our heart. That He can enable us to see Him. And in Him, that is the strength we need for life. In Him, that is the resurrection glory that we look forward to. And that is the promise that those who don't know Him need to hear. That is the promise that we have to bring to the nations. That is the gospel message. I forgive you, Christ said. You are forgiven when He said that. When He died on the cross. That forgiveness. That forgiveness is what people need to hear. That redemption. Because only in that forgiveness, only in that redemption, can they find the freedom from the sins of this world. One of my favorite songs is a Christian song by the band called Third Day. You may or may not know this song. The title is Cry Out to Jesus, and I'd like to read the chorus right at this point. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll meet you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. And He'll hear you. No matter where you are in life, no matter what burdens you bring before His cross, He will hear you. And in, the, in your cries, in your tears, He'll answer you. He'll give you the strength and He will give you the sight. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before You knowing that at times that we are blind that we stumble in the darkness of our sinful lives and we long for You to come. We long for You to save us, that we may literally see You face to face. But Lord, until that time comes, may You help us to be reassured that through Your cross You did redeem us. Through Your cross You did save us. Help us to find the reassurance that all that we go through, that all that we struggle with, You are there. Lord, in Your name we pray. Amen.